Hey guys, coming in. As you can tell, I have not made any videos for you today at all. Um, I've been very busy, and that's because today I went to actually see a play. Um, in my theater arts class, we were told about this the first day of school, and uh, basically I went to see this play. And I definitely really want to see it, and uh, that play was The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Now, I've never seen a play on Broadway. I've seen musicals. I've seen eight musicals on Broadway. I have seen the Radio City Christmas Spectacular twice, but I don't count that as a musical or a play because that only happens during Christmas time. It's just an event that happens. I don't really count that as an actual show. Um, I just count it as, as an event that happens that you can see from November to December. Um... But this is a show that I really wanted to see because obviously it won Best Play and I heard people say this is not only one of the best shows on Broadway right now, but it's maybe one of the best shows of all time and uh, I was definitely looking forward to it. I went in pretty blind though. I really didn't know too much about this show. I didn't really know the structure of it. I really didn't. I knew the basic plot and that really was it and I'm very happy with that because I have to tell you guys that The Curious Instant of Dog in the Nighttime is one of the most inventive shows I've ever seen and I really feel is a new, you know, breaks new ground for Broadway. Broadway, and I think will is a revolutionary show just for theater in general. This is by far one of the best productions I've ever seen. I was so impressed by how well this production was. It was incredible. I loved it, and I think it's just I highly recommend you guys check it out. Um, now, just so you guys know, I will be reading off this cast list. It will not be like Alex Sharp and people like that because obviously this show has been out for two years. Which let's talk about that. First of all, one of the reasons I was very interested in this is because plays usually don't last that long on Broadway. They last about, I'd say, a few months, probably. A few months is when they last, and uh, sometimes they last a bit longer, but usually like a few months. And this show has lasted almost two years, which is incredible that it has. I mean, just the fact for how long it's gone, especially, and I know it's like, oh, it's only been on Broadway for a year, but it started in 2013 at uh, the National Theater, and that's incredible that it lasted as long as it did. I love that it lasted that long, and that's something I definitely, and it definitely does deserve it, because there's really nothing like this on Broadway. The basic plot I can tell you about the show, you have, this is a show you have to be very careful what you say, and uh, I'm just going to basically say um, the basic plot is there's this dog, uh, Wellington, that is, in the very beginning of the play, we see that there's this dog, Wellington, that is murdered, and uh, no one really thinks anything of it except for the character Christopher John Francis Boone, who is this mad genius who does have some form of autism or some sort of mental disease like that and he wants to find out who murdered this dog he's very interested in it and while finding out while um figuring out who murdered him he starts to find out a lot more about himself and that's really all i can say about the curious instance of the dog in the nighttime there's a lot that i really do love about this show um there's so much that's fantastic about this show that i haven't seen before and i definitely really love that let's first get to the cast of the show Everyone in this show was spectacular. I think everyone was amazing. There wasn't a single bad performance. I think I think everyone was great. And uh, I don't know if uh, actually let me see who let me see if they have a list of who played who because it's not on. Um, ah, there we go. That that okay. That that works for me. Um, but basically, I do have a list of all the people in the show, and I was definitely. Um, you know, looking forward to the casting, and they're, they're one of the best parts of the show by far. Everyone in this cast is extremely committed. Everyone in the cast really knows what they're doing. They all did an amazing job, especially Tyler Leah as Christopher Boone. <laughs> Tyler Leah was amazing, and I'll tell you guys why. I met him after the show because, of course, my class, we did go at the end to the stage door, and they did come out. This is a very reserved guy. He is extremely reserved in real life, and that's why it's so impressive that he plays this character. Christopher John Francis Boone is extremely high energy. He has a lot going on with him, and I definitely really love him as his character. But something else I love that while he does have autism, you do kind of understand what he's talking about. I mean, he has a lot of interesting ways of looking at life. You know, one of the most famous parts of the show is the line, I find people very interesting and I think it definitely is very interesting the way he said that. Um, but I also love what he says about this dog. You know, he thinks of this, he treats this murder like a regular murder. And people are thinking he's crazy for it, but he really feels it's a big deal. And you understand why he's doing this. And I thought he was fantastic in the show. He really was amazing. He had so many emotional breakdowns. And it was just incredible to watch. And I really love his character. And he really sold the emotion perfectly. When he felt sad, I felt sad. When he was 
happy, I was happy, and I thought he was just phenomenal, honestly, phenomenal, one of the best performances I've seen, I think, on Broadway ever, he was just incredible, and I know Alex Sharp was the best, too bad I didn't get to see him, but Tyler Leah is definitely doing a great job, and I think he really was fantastic, um, the, uh, the role of the other big part of this show, of course, is uh, Mr. Ed Boon, who was played by Andrew Lawn, and he also was fantastic. I really love the character of Ed Lawn. Basically, um, you know, what I love about the character of Ed Boon is that he really cares about his son. He wants to help his son, but he also thinks that his son is kind of crazy, and there's a lot going on with Ed Boon than we think, and I definitely thought that he did a really great job in the show. He really was very good. Um... There were some points where he was kind of funny, and I definitely liked that about his character. But you also really have this fantastic bond between the two of them. His best scene by far comes at the end of the first act. I can't tell you guys what happens, but it is an amazing scene. He was incredible and almost had me in tears. He was just amazing. I really loved his character. Um, also, the character of uh, Judy, you know, uh, Christopher's mother. She was also really great, played by Enid Graham. I can't tell you why she was so good, but she was definitely really great. And... Uh, Basically, you know, we're, we are to assume that she has died of a heart attack basically two years before the book's events, and uh, we do find out some more stuff about her, but they do show her in flashbacks and things like that, and she did an amazing job, and I thought she was great. But something that's very interesting about the show is that a lot of it is narrated by Christopher's um, mentor at school, Siobhan. Siobhan is this girl that Christopher has had a lot of bonding with, and she clearly has been on a very professional level with him, and... Uh, she narrates a lot of the show. Um, she narrates a lot of it, and I think it definitely is uh, very interesting that we saw that. I honestly really like that. I haven't really seen a show like that before. Well, I've seen sort of something like that, but I thought it was really cool um, the way they did that because there would be times where... Uh, where Christopher would say something, and then he wouldn't say it, but Siobhan would then basically say what was in his mind, and we realize eventually that she's reading his book, and there's so many references to how they've turned the book into a play, which I think is very funny, but she was so great. I definitely really loved her character, and Rosie ben Benson did a very good job with her, and I thought she was definitely really great as well. Um, also, the Shears, Mr. and Mrs. Shears, were also really great, very funny, but you also get really get into their characters, because these are the people that Christopher allegedly feels are, you know, Miss Mr. Shears, allegedly a person that Christopher feels is the one that murdered Wellington, and I really like that. And Wellington as well is a character in this. Even though Wellington is dead, he is a big part of this, and you really do get that feel. Wellington really represents the human aspect of this show, and I think he definitely did a very good job with that. Everyone, I thought, was amazing. I really feel everyone did a great job. Also, a character that was so funny was Mrs. Alexander. Oh my god, she had me laughing so much throughout the show. Nancy, um, Roba Knight did a great job playing her. She was so funny, and she really sold everything perfectly. Definitely really, really great character. Um, overall, I thought everyone was perfectly casted, and I really thought everyone was fantastic. The directing of this show is just unlike anything I've seen before. Like I said, there's really nothing like this on Broadway, and it's because of how the directing is. This is one of the most personal theater pieces I've seen, because, you know, in a movie, you can do a lot with that. You can really get into a character's head. It's not easy to do in a theater production. And you know what? In this, they do that. Everything about this is an intimate look into Christopher's life. That is exactly what this entire show is trying to do, and it does it perfectly. I mean... You really get the sense of how much of an outsider this kid is. You get the sense of how different he is and how he kind of doesn't really think like we do. And it's very interesting to get into his head. And everything about the directing was just phenomenal. I really loved it. And it also is a show that they forced you to take seriously, which I definitely really like. But they weren't afraid to have fun with it, which I did really love. And... I definitely thought the directing was perfect. The writing is really what impressed me. The writing is very shocking. I did not expect the writing to be as engaging or interesting as it was. The show went by so fast for me. I was into it the whole time, and I thought it was truly something amazing. There are some twists in this that are genuinely shocking. I didn't see them coming at all. I essentially thought this was just going to be a murder mystery. Let me tell you guys, the murder mystery only takes place um, in the first act, and I'm not going to tell you guys why, but it only takes place in the first act. The second act introduces something completely new that the end of the first act introduces it makes things completely even more interesting than it was um and that's something i really love i think the second act was even more engaging than the first one just because of what the first act introduced and i definitely really love that and 
was very funny as well. There's so much breaking the fourth wall in this. It's pretty funny. Um, there's so many references to that. We're watching a play and they connected with us very well. And that's something that you have to do. You have to do a way to bore to not bore your audience. And I thought they did it very well, the writing. I really enjoyed it. And it really was fantastic, I have to say. I thought the writing was definitely one of the strongest parts of the show by far. And I definitely really loved it. And I thought it just, it stayed interesting the whole time. And uh, it never was too, it was very easy to understand. Was, I was afraid this show wouldn't be as easy to understand, but it really was. It was an extremely easy show to understand. And you connected with these characters so well. Even if you don't have autism, which a lot of people don't, obviously. A lot of people can't refer to that. There are probably some people that can. In fact, I probably know a few offhand. Not saying I know someone with, actually, there, there are people that go to my school that have disabilities. I don't know exactly what they have, but I know they have mental disabilities. And... I think they'll be real to relate to this, but I think also if you're just, you know, have a different way of looking at things or you just, you have some sort of passion and I think you will relate to this. And honestly, anyone I think can relate to the show and that's something I thought they did very well, the writing. But the thing that I think is most impressive about the show by far is the set design and just the overall production value. Holy shit, this was incredible. Everything about the production in this show is just mind-blowing. I have no idea how they did it. The entire stage is just a box. It's just a box. That's all it is. It's the silver box, and I took it as... Basically, Christopher says very early, he says in the show how he wants to be in a secluded area and uh, not have many... You know, not have a lot around it and just keep it simple. Um... And I found that very interesting. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that's because, you know, of his um, obsession with, like, video games and computer games and things like that, which I think very well could be true. I think that definitely is a possibility that that's what that's trying to show. But I also feel it really does tie into the whole secluded part of the show, and that's something I thought was definitely very well done. But everything in the show was so interesting. When he has an emotional breakdown, it gets loud, and you really get into his head and feel the demons in his head. It's it's almost like you're inside his head the entire show, and I love that. I thought that was incredible the way they did that. The trains. The sound effects sound like you're right there. There is a sound effect with a train. I swear to God, I felt like I was about to get hit by a train. That's how powerful it is. It's so loud. It's so engaging. And I love that. I think that was incredible the way they did that. The way they made it so interactive. I mean, there's not one point where they give you a second to breathe in this show in terms of sound. There's always sound going. And just the 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 dancing in the show. There's dancing in this show. This is not a musical, but there is dancing in the show. And it's pretty damn impressive, I have to say. And that's something I definitely really love was the dancing. Phenomenal, honestly, phenomenal dancing. Um, and just the uh, ensemble overall was phenomenal. You know, plays don't have a lot of ensembles, but they really were phenomenal. Um, also, something I also love was the pantomime. Oh my god, the pantomime. I did not know this show had so much pantomime, but it was such a cool idea. As you guys, you know, if you guys know what pantomime is, when you don't have a set, like I said, all they have is a box. So they really interact everything. Like him knocking on the door. Um, is very interesting, but what I found even more interesting is that there would be parts where they talk about, you know, um, give us some exposition about an event that's happened in his life, and he literally acted it out, um, like we, basically, like, if we were to see it from his mind and how it kind of played out, and I thought that was definitely very interesting the way they did that, a very good ga a visual gag that I didn't know they were gonna do, but I really love that because I've never really seen a show do something like that, where they literally have the characters play out what they're saying, I think it definitely is very interesting, like I said, it's not easy to do, um, something like this. It's not easy to pantomime. It's not easy to, um, you know, do what a movie could do, but this very much felt like a movie of points, and I thought that was fantastic. I love that. The score is so mind-blowing and interesting, and I really love the score, I have to say. I thought the score to the show was fantastic. Also, um, something I also love is that if you are deaf, um, they actually do have sign language throughout the entire show. So if you're deaf or whatever, um, and you can't understand what the character's saying, they do have a translator, which I thought was cool they did that. I don't know if all plays do that, but I've never seen a play before, so I don't know if they did that, but I think that was cool they did that. Again, I haven't seen any plays. I've seen eight musicals, but no plays, so I don't know if they do that normally, but I thought that was really cool they did that. Um, again, I haven't seen plays, like I said. Um, but then also, guys, I will tell you guys, you need to stay after the curtain call. The curtain call does not mean the show's over. There's something after the curtain call that's so awesome and I didn't see coming at all and I loved and I thought was one of the best parts of the show. It honestly was one of the highlights of the show by far. I thought it was phenomenal the way they handled that and I really love that. 
Also, I felt the show was very emotionally engaging. Like I told you guys, I was into it the whole time. There wasn't one point where I was like bored or anything. I thought it was extremely interesting, definitely. Um, and I really want to talk sports. I really want to talk about what really impressed me with this show um, and what I love the most. So if you guys haven't seen Curious Instant, please go see it, honestly. It is one of the best things in theater, I think, ever. It is a show that I think will be known as one of the greats in terms of plays. There aren't many plays that can reinvent themselves, but this is a play that I feel is really defined theater and made it something even more a much more intimate experience than you essentially thought it was going to be no it's not a black box it's not black box theater but it's still very intimate in the sense of you're really getting into this character's head and i'll get into that but let's get into the spoilers because there's a lot to talk about Again, like I told you guys, I didn't really know any of the spoilers in this show. So when Ed revealed that he was the one that killed Wellington, I thought it was incredible. And of course, Christopher obviously is heartbroken over this. He doesn't know how to react. And the scene where Ed is putting Christopher to bed and he's trying to get him to just sleep and Christopher obviously can't. It's so hard to watch, and you felt so bad for his character because this is the one person that Christopher felt had his back and the one person they didn't feel would do something like this. And... I thought that was definitely very interesting that we saw that. And something I look at Christopher is that he wasn't mad at his father for killing Wellington. He was worried that his father would come after him because, you know, if his father could kill a dog, he could kill a human. And again, the way he looked at that, I thought was very interesting. The way he looked at a human, you know, a dog as just this human and that, oh, even though this was a dog, it very much could happen to a human. I honestly would agree with that. I mean, killing an animal is a living thing and so are humans. They are living things. So you're basically saying that if you kill an animal, you basically want to kill a human. And I thought it was definitely very interesting um so then of course he did go with his mom when we found out his mom was alive i thought there was an incredible twist and i love that i didn't see that coming at all and uh, i definitely really love that scene where he realized his mom's alive he has you know that mental breakdown everything and it was incredible and then act two of course his mom is in a huge part of it she becomes a huge focus of the second act and you know you could tell that he obviously had a strained relation with his mom and you know obviously he's pissed at his father for not telling her for not telling him that she was alive and uh he goes through a lot during the journey as we he goes through a lot but i was so happy when he passed that test and just the fact that he wasn't uh like overjoyed about it he was just like yeah i got an a it was a perfect score i thought that was pretty funny because you know you can just tell um that he doesn't care that he passed he really doesn't he pretty much knew he was going to um and there's just more important things in life than that to him. And I, I really like seeing I have to say. Um, and I thought the ending was definitely very clever. But what I really loved was the ending where he came out and gave did that math problem. When he did that math problem, it's so engaging. You don't think a math problem could be interesting because it's math. How interesting can that be? That sounds very boring. He makes it interesting just by the way he's talking, by the way he does it. He solves it in four minutes. It's just incredible the way that happens. And it really shows how much of a genius he is. And I really did love that. Um, and I did get signatures, like I said, on the playbill, this is, uh, the signature, these are two signatures I did get right here, which was really cool, but overall, guys, Curious Incidents is one of the most inventive shows I've ever seen, I highly recommend you guys check it out, it is an absolute masterpiece in terms of theater, I think it is fantastic, it's going to go down, I think it's one of the best plays of all time, honestly, definitely the best of this century, like, if I had to pick a play that I think I'd want to see the most, it would definitely be this play, it deserves Every nomination it's got, it deserves every award it's got. It truly is something that is spectacular. It truly is something that is unlike anything else I've seen in theater, and it really is something amazing. But that is my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys saw this show. If you have seen it, we'll see you guys in the next video, which I know I haven't reviewed Scream Queens, but it will be for Scream Queens, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.